We've been working on for the last couple of years called Rogue, and uh, the team has been Element Solutions and Boundless as well. Uh, Rogue is actually a backronym. We came up with the name, and then we decided to, what that means. It's Rapid Open Geospatial User Driven Enterprise, just because if you're an OSD program, you have to have an acronym, right? So uh, Rogue is a joint capability technology demonstration, and what that means, it's an op Office of Secretary of Defense mechanism for bringing somewhat mature technologies to operational problems. So basically, you identify an operational problem, you say, hey, I have a technical solution for that, uh, and then you basically have two years to basically proof it out uh, in the field. So the problem was really collaboration with geospatial information, and when you put it in the context of humanitarian ass assistance and disaster response, then you make the problem a little bit more interesting or complex at the same time. Uh, the key with disaster response is you don't really know who's going to show up to the table, right? If something happens, then different countries come to the table, different NGOs, depending on what part of the world is in, different agencies, and of course, whichever military or militaries uh, respond. Uh, common situation awareness is obviously needed. Uh, when Haiti came, uh, went down, when Yolanda happened, everybody was trying to grasp and get it, like, what's, what's the actual uh, situation on the ground, and then they, everybody needs to share that information. So. Uh, it's, it's where you're going to radical sharing almost in, in some cases. And uh, they each have a piece of the puzzle, right? So the folks that are at, for example, USAID know where all the different projects are and investments on the ground. The local uh, response agency actually has an idea of where the most vulnerable areas are and they can probably tell you uh, where the most likely areas are where the, the worst impact has been. And uh, that all needs to be combined somehow. Uh, they're all dis distributed just by the nature of it and sometimes disconnected, right? So uh, the co communications have this kind of bad habit of not being available when you need them the most. Um, and the last one was actually driven by uh, Southern Command themselves as the operational manager is the, all the partners need to have access, direct access to the te technology themselves. So one of the unique things about the Southern Command uh, AOR is that they want all the countries to be technologically enabled. It's not a help for them if a country doesn't have technology and they can't really share information. So really that's our focus. Our focus is just to share geospatial information and to do that in a very distributed and uh, ha uh, fashion and handle disconnected uh, cases. And I always have this slide up here to make my sure I, I give credit where credit is due. The US Army Corps of Engineers is the technical manager for this and they're the ones that have been really uh, driving us forward. Uh, I mentioned South Southern Command as well, but Department of State HIU is also involved, and we're transitioning to Pacific Disaster Center. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Honduras, actually, throughout this. Um, so we're using quite a few components. We're kind of using the OpenGeo suite, uh, plus this thing called GeoNode. It's a portal for discovering geospatial information. It's all open source. Uh, this cool thing called GeoGit that you just heard about, so thanks to Juan for setting that up really well. Uh, and then we have a couple custom components. We actually modified GeoNode a little bit because we've been adding it to GeoGetAware. Uh, and then we have a mobile app to, for data collection that's uh, set up, uh, basically specialized to be able to go disconnected, load the data, go disconnected, collect the data, come back, reconnect, um, push your changes. And then just a thing called MapLoom for weaving all that data together in a, in a web map. So there's a cool thing called GeoGit you already heard of. So, um, one of the things that we do in Rogue is we store all of our data in GeoGit databases for the most part. Some stuff's in still in PostGIS. Uh, GeoServer lets you get away with using a lot of different data sources, and we take advantage of that. Um, but the key for us was the multi-user, kind of multi-organizational aspect, right? Um, and then the other key was being able to actually sync repositories. So uh, and along with the conflict resolution. So that was really key. So if you've got different groups of people that are actually working on data together and they go disconnected, they're gonna diverge very quickly, right? Think about Word docs before track changes, right? I send you the Word doc and now you have to painstakingly go through and manually figure out what I changed or I have to tell you what I changed. If I did 50 things, then we're all in trouble, right? So that's kind of like the state where uh, you are now if you're sh uh, shipping files around. So I'm a geo nerd, uh, maybe even a neo-geographer, I'm not sure if I qualify or not. Uh, but from my point of view, OpenStreetMap's kind of like epiphany, this great kind of concept of sharing data and making it available. 
Um, I'm also an analyst, in, uh, or was an analyst a long time ago. Uh, and analysts are worrisome about their data. So this is kind of what they worry about, right? Um, this, you could laugh. This is meant to be lighthearted. Uh, so the, uh, this is actually what happens when you let three developers uh, take the UI and play with the data and start making commits. But that's actually pretty cool because it's 2,000 commits. Uh, everything's versioned. The, you can actually, when this data was actually still live, you could actually go through all the different versions of the Shark of Snooze because there was a little edit war over that one. Um, but so really what it gets to is the provenance is key. So provenance is key to actually being able to have trust. So if I want to give you my data, what are you going to do with it? Especially if I'm going to let you edit the same data that I'm editing, what's going to happen, right? Well, to establish trust, one is I got to know who did it. Uh, and that's what GeoGit lets us do. And understanding the lineage, actually what specifically changed and when it changed. Um, and it's also key to being able to work distributed because when you're distributed, when you come back online and you start pushing this information with each other, the data, the software itself has to know it changed. And we used uh, a mobile app we built called Arbiter. It's open source as well. If you want to use it, you can go and grab it. It's um, not quite as slick as uh, the, uh, the one we saw earlier, the map tool. So, but it's meant for data distributed data or disconnected data collection. So you cache the data, uh, you could go at it, you come back, you push your changes, we can make photos and associate them to the features, and you can see those in the map as well. Um, and we don't care about the comms as long as it's pretty decent, right? It's going to be uh, 3G or Wi-Fi. So I promise you I get to Honduras and how we actually put this in use. So each one of those nodes, uh, you see Pacific Disaster Center on the left. Up on the top was Joint Task Force Bravo, uh, so Kano Air Base. And at the bottom is Capeco. Capeco is the FEMA equivalent in Honduras. So they're the ones that are responsible for uh, resilience uh, as well as response. And so what we did is an exercise uh, based around their Independence Day uh, support. And we had data syncing using GeoGit between all three uh, locations. And uh, the back end, uh, or the front end, I'm sorry, was GeoNode with our map uh, inset on the JTF Bravo Quebeco, but over on uh, the PD PDC side, it was actually disaster aware, because that's already a, a situational awareness tool for event management and response. So basically, we could let like users at Southcom and other agencies be able to see the data and take advantage of this uh, user-generated content uh, without having to change the tool they're using. Uh, and we try to make the other tools as simple as possible. Um, and the other beautiful thing about GeoGit is because of the fact that it keeps track of all the commits and what commit you're on, um, you can sync basically all three directions at once. And all three of these nodes can keep track with each other. If you drop connection, for example, between PDC and Capeco, all the changes will go through uh, JTF Bravo. And it's okay that you're actually getting the same, well, you're actually syncing with the uh, two at both at the same time. So the operational demonstration that we're going to have next month is actually going to be based on Hurricane Mitch. Uh, the one we did previous last year was actually for the Independence Day parades that they had. Uh, and going up the main boulevard there into the stadium, uh, they had all their teams situation, situated along the parade route, and it was very much kind of an uh, event management kind of thing. Uh, but the key was, uh, it was very much corollary to what they have to do manually with their logs. So if somebody opens uh, an event, a child is lost. Boom, this timestamp, child was reported lost, this location. It's exactly what they'd write. At this timestamp, parent parents were found, child was reunited. Okay, keep track of that. So basically, we just did the same thing using GeoGit. They would just go and uh, they would actually just use the tablets and just change the reports. And it's only pushing the WFST, so it could be really any tool that's doing it. And on the back end, you're getting all the versioning that goes along with it. Um, so we actually did have uh, people reunited. We actually had a uh, traffic accident reported. Um, heat exhaustion was actually more common as well. But it was actually quite successful in that case. It's uh, kind of a little bit different concept than our mapping and data management concepts that we uh, talked about. So assessment and response is kind of one of the big focuses that they have down there. Uh, building damage assessments, they have reports that started out as Excel spreadsheets that we turned into layers. Uh, there were 50 some odd fields with 
certain conditionals on them, and you'd have to go down and go do that report, and it becomes an official government report. Um, that's now a layer. Uh, we can also leverage OSM. The picture on the right is actually the uh, hot layer, the humanitarian open street map layer for Yolanda. So that was one of the first experiments with pulling uh, OSM using GeoGit. And just being able to grab that and pull that in is one of our, also our main use cases. So this ties in with the Department of State because they have this great program called Image of the Crowd where they make data available to the volunteers for OpenStreetMap. Uh, and people can digitize, but the key is you can also grab that now and you can pull that down. And so you can go disconnected with that as well. And also down in Honduras, they're going to start using it for uh, their social development layers. Uh, go to a, they have a, there's a lot of poverty in Honduras, right? So going to a house, what do you need? What does your house need? Do you need water? Do you need utilities? Do you need a roof? Do you need all three, et cetera? And just keeping the history of all that. So there's a website that's got all of our slides and links um, available to it, so you can go and get that. And there's actually even a uh, demo server that's live you can play with. So hopefully the resolution is pretty good here. So this is um, a GNO with Mathloom inset in it. And we've got some of the test data that we've pushed up on here. Um, getting to the history is actually pretty straightforward. We've got it by the layer and by the feature. So if I pull this up, so this is a GeoGit layer. I've actually got a history button. And this gets me to a list of now I can see all the changes that have been made, who made them, and when. All the way back to the beginning of the feature. And if I want to see a specific change, I can go in here. And it'll actually tell me, uh, I can dig down through here. I think on this one, I just changed the one. So we kind of follow a. a Norm of green means the new, 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 something that was new or added. Yellow means it's changed and are modified. And then uh, red means the delete. So this one, I came and I fixed the name because it was actually uh, typed in incorrectly earlier by me. And one of the cool things that GeoGits lets you do is uh, it's actually called the blame command. We decided to call it show authors so that people wouldn't be freaked out by it. But I can also get uh, everything about each individual attribute within a feature. Because you think about the lifetime of a feature, it's going to have a lot of different authors that are contributing to those different pieces of data. And so you can actually get at that information as well. And then if I want, I actually have the, uh, the big red button for uh, undoing it. We also have a conflict resolution in here. So the conflict resolution is actually very similar. It have three panels. You could have the uh, original, then the chain, or the, basically the yours and theirs. And then in the middle is the one that's going to be the final. We have uh, the ability to set up syncs. So we can uh, run a sync through here. Uh, and then if I go in, we wanted people to be able to add features pretty straightforward fashion as well. So now it just gets added to the database. For the map, we're just making every edit to commit, so it's going in almost immediately. Uh, and then for the, the mobile app, it'll actually push uh, however many commits you've, or how many changes you've made during the, the time you've been working. Um, and then notifications were key, because it's always great to know that you're getting the latest and greatest changes from people, but what if you don't know what actually changed? That was kind of one of the problems. So, we made it easy to get to the notifications and figure out when something was added. And it basically has all the same abilities as uh, what I showed earlier. Right. And then, like I said, there's actually a uh, full layer history as well. And this lets you get through all the, the history of the layer itself. Um, so that's just kind of a real quick tour. Uh, there is uh, actually a website online. And if you want, you could actually go up and play with the server yourself. There's a gentleman from uh, the Netherlands is playing with it. If you want to get to the hub, 
you can just get to it on GitHub as well. So uh, we've been fulfilling our mandate of making sure everything is open source. Okay. Questions?